Hello, hello. I'm going to do a quick video to try to clear up some of the questions that have been cropping up uh, since my last video post. So I'm going to dive into the electronic layout that I have planned. I also have a couple questions. So if you're experienced in this area and you can assist me, I'd really appreciate it. So let's have a look. Let's just start with the drive systems. It's going to be two electric hub motors in the front wheel of each bike. This is the Grin All Axle hub motor here, manufactured in Canada by the great team at Grin. If you're interested, go to ebikes.ca. You can find all the product info. You can purchase it right from their website. The bike I, that's in the picture here, this is my electric mountain bike. I will be using a bullet cargo bike with a big battery in the front cargo bay, but it'll still be, for all intents and purposes, wired up the same way as you're gonna see here. Each hub motor will be connected to a Franken runner or phase runner controller also by Grin. The front controller I have mounted just on the handlebar stem. I'm a tall guy, so I've got actually room to put it right there. It works out really nicely. For the cyber drop controller, I'll probably mount it using 3M VHB tape to the outside, right about there. And I will have cable glands allowing the wiring to go through to power the 12 volt system, which I'll talk about in a moment. So we've got two hub motors and they're both running to Franken runner controllers. And there's two ways you can run this. You can control it with one cycle analyst. Grin sells a splitter cable that connects to each controller. And honestly, I'm not so well versed in this, but the splitter cable allows you to control the throttle input to the controllers with one throttle to both motors. So you accelerate with your twist grip throttle and it accelerates both motors together. And Grin has a whole video series that I'll link to on how this works but essentially it has a torque sensor so that it sends the power efficiently to both motors as needed and adjusted in real time. I don't know exactly how that all works, um, but you can watch their video series to get a handle on that. This is a 20 inch wheel. This is a 26 inch wheel. So I had to change the motor winding of this hub motor compared to the winding of this hub motor. Now with my planned bullet bike, the front, in the front wheel will be 20 inches as well. So I can use the exact same motor, the exact same winding. And that's the ideal scenario for controlling both hub motors using one cycle analyst. The second way you can do this, and this is what I'm going to try, is to basically run them independently. So I've bought two cycle analysts that I'm going to mount on my handlebars. I'm going to use a 3D printed mounting plate. So on the left, I'll have a twist grip throttle controlling this hub motor. On the right, I'll have a twist grip throttle controlling this motor. I'll have a trip wire controlling the regen braking to this motor. I'll have a trip wire on the right controlling the regen, regen braking to this motor. So I'll be able to control everything independently. And the reason why I want to try this is because when I tested controlling both with just the one cycle analyst, I found that like on looser terrain, the power distribution wasn't so effective because it would send more power to the wheel that didn't have as much torque. So if you were on loose gravel, it would just send more and more power to the wheel that was spinning out on the loose gravel versus adapting to it. And so with separate inputs, you can control, you know, how much power you want to send to this and how much power you want to send to the front. And I think that's just going to give me better control overall on loose gravel or any of those kind of situations. The first solution definitely was very workable. You just have to make sure the weight balance between you on your bike and the front hub motor and then the trailer weight should be fairly equal. Otherwise, you get those issues with torque sensing and a stuttering front wheel. So those are some of the issues to look out for if you go for the first method, which is the simplest method. I'm going to test the second method and I'll do a future video on that. Okay, so if we go to the main battery now, let's start there. Just picture this as the cargo bay of my bullet bike. So this is the front cargo bay. I'm gonna have the main battery in here. Still don't know exactly how big it is, but I'm thinking it's gonna be close to 150 or even 160 amp hour, 72 volt battery. Uh, somewhere around 10 kilowatt hours, which I, using the Grin Motor Simulator online, which I'll also link to in the description, gives me an estimate of around 273 kilometers range based on these inputs. Now this is always changing, so don't hold me to it. I will provide full real world test results in future. Ethan, be quiet. 
This box represents my bullet cargo bay area and inside I'm going to house my main battery. From the battery, the main leads will be 6 gauge stranded copper wire going to positive and negative bus bars. And from the bus bars, I'll be running a circuit to a 72 volt to 12 volt step down DC to DC converter, which will go on to power the front headlight on the bike. I'm going to use an S1 spot from Baja Designs. That thing is amazing. I'm also going to power a USB port, keep my phone powered while I'm traveling and it'll power the rear tail light on the bike, which I'll need when I'm just riding the bike disconnected from the cyber drop. The next circuit running from the bus bars will feed into this XT90 anti-spark connector. And then the wiring, it's not gonna look like this, obviously it'll, it'll run along the crossbar to this connection point above the hitch. And then from there, it'll run all the way back to power the Franken runner controller, which will power the cyber drop front hub motor. Also splitting off the same circuit, I'll feed this into the cyber drop and another step down converter and there'll be a 12 volt system in here. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. <clears throat> Let's finish this off first. The second circuit will be coming to power the front Franken runner controller and the front hub motor. And the gauge of this, of both these circuits will be 10 gauge wire, again, stranded copper silicone wire and 10 gauge will be plenty big enough to handle the amperage that'll be running through them. So I don't anticipate I'll be running more than 40 amps to each hub motor max. Yeah, I, don't, I really don't need more than 3000 watts going to each motor at the same time. However, the reason why I'm using six gauge going from the main battery to the bus bars is because from the bus bars, to the main battery, this will need to handle the amperage being pulled from both motors. So that's assuming 40 amp max in each motor, I need 80 amps. So in that case, probably 10 gauge is going to be fine. I'm not going to be running it at max open throttle, but just to be safe, I'm going to use six gauge wire from the main battery to the bus bars. To charge the main battery, I plan on using four cycle satiators from Grin as well. I'm going to connect them in parallel and I should be able to charge this big battery overnight in an eight hour period using a typical 110, 120 volt standard household circuit, which are usually running on a 15 amp breaker. I'm gonna mount the cycle satiators on the inside of this box, and then there'll be a plug. And from my experience, it's not hard to find an outlet with power out there on your travels. Moving on to the 12 volt system for the cyber drop. Again, feeding into a 72 volts coming in through the cable glands it's gonna to go to bus bars. And then from there, I've kind of tried to sketch it out here is what it's gonna look like. So this on off switch, I think I'm actually gonna change that to an XT90 uh, anti-spark connector because I can't find an on off switch for a battery system for 72 volts. It seems like everything is 48 volts or under. If you have a suggestion, let me know. For my connection points at the bus bars, let's start with the MPPT controller which will take my solar panel power and send it back through the circuit to charge the main battery. The BMS will be a, a common charge and discharge setup. Also, there'll be a DC, DC step down converter running off another one of the bus, bus bar connection points and that'll feed the 12 volt box. And, but to finish off at this stage, I'll have an inverter which will take that 72 volts and invert it to 120 volt output so I can plug in my laptop and charge a cooktop stove to take advantage of my big battery so I can do some cooking out there in the wild. Moving forward, we've got the 12 volt fuse box and then I'm gonna have my 12 volt circuits. So let's talk about these one at a time. This Garmin radar, this is something that I would love some input into. Um, I love what the product does. It senses the cars behind you. Now I can see I have line of sight above the cyber drop when I'm riding, which is great, but I want some additional heads up when there's big trucks coming behind me, traffic, busy roads. This Garmin radar is a great product. It's highly reviewed, except it's battery powered. So I'm gonna get, I wanna find a way to hardwire it to my 12 volt circuit so that I can be on all the time. And I can use my phone and I'll be able to see the traffic coming up behind me and I think this will be an essential safety feature that I want to figure out how to include. I just don't know if it's possible or how to 
take the battery out of the device and hardwire it. Maybe it's simple. Um, I guess I'm just gonna have to find out. The next circuit will power interior lights. Gonna have a dimmer on those pot lights. So I bought four pot lights that roughly planning to go there, 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 and there. Next circuit will be for the exterior lights. I bought these little three quarter inch LED markers, orange, which I'll put on the sides. Really, you can put as many as you want. I mean, I'll maybe put one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. They came in a 10 pack, so that would give five aside and make use of all of them and give me lots of visibility. I'll have a circuit to power the fan, the roof vent, max air roof vent. Then I'm gonna power USB ports, four USB ports, which I'm gonna mount into my Coroplast bulkhead that you saw me do earlier. Then I'm gonna have a separate porch light switch for a porch light on the other side here where the door is. I'm thinking maybe I'll have a little socket for a 12 volt heater or I'll just run a small electric heater off the inverter. I want rear running lights that will get brighter when I brake, just like a car. And I want left and right turn signals. This is where I'm really stumped. I don't know how to wire this up, right? Most wiring kits just plug into the car and it's already kind of pre-engineered. But I'm not sure how to do this, and I would love some help if you have any suggestions. I know from the Grin website that you can connect the trip wire to the brake light somehow so that when you pull the brake on the handlebar, it's going to make the, the lights brighten back here like you'd want them to. I just don't know how to wire that all up, but I want to do that. Also, for left-right turn signals, I don't know what's the best way to do that. Um... I guess I should look at the motorcycle industry to see how they do it, but for some reason this is really causing me a lot of delay here. So if you have any suggestions about how to wire up the rear brake lights and turn signals, and maybe even a flashing hazard light option, I want to figure out how to do that properly. To conceal the wiring on the inside, I plan on cutting slits into the foam and pressing the wires into it. Same thing with the pot lights. I'll use my plunge cut router to cut a recess and press fit the pot lights into the foam as, as well before covering with that hall liner fabric that I've purchased. I thought about using a remote control lighting system for the brake lights and turn signals where you've got the control in the front handlebars and it remotely controls the battery powered turn signals and brake lights. And some of these even have motion sensors so that it just senses when you're braking and it automatically brightens the rear tail light. I would much prefer a hardwired long-term solution. So that's it. Keep the questions coming if you have them. Honestly, this is just my starting point. I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but I'd love to hear from you if you've got some suggestions. We'll see how it goes. I'll keep you posted. Uh, probably be a couple weeks before I get another video up. So have a great couple weeks, and I'll see you later.